In this short trading video, I'm going to talk about data pre-processing in Moselle. Pre-processing is one of the fundamental components of creating any full-scale project. In a sense, it's the bridge between the raw data you pull from a database or you read from an Excel file and the data your optimization model or any algorithm awaits to consume. Raw data is inherently prone to errors and typos and failing to handling them properly might lead to your code crashing unexpectedly or your model becoming infeasible. And all that might translate into hours trying to debug your code before finally figuring that actually it was a data issue. This sample Excel file has a few raw data records to serve our purpose in this video. Each record corresponds to an activity with associated start time in date format, location, activity duration, and maximum capacity allowed during the activity. The records having some type of data issue in any of these fields are marked in red. Ultimately, we'd like to report these issues to call for action. Or if these are known issues with known fixes in the code, you might implement some logic to handle them properly. Of course, in addition to all these reporting and corrections, our goal is to have a list of valid entries in memory for the model to consume safely after this pre-processing step. Here is a Moselle package created to pre-process these records. We have our declaration block here. We have a set of integers to capture the records and a bunch of dynamic arrays are created to capture the information associated with each of these records. Next, we declare our procedures. Sample data parts is the public procedure uh, that calls a bunch of private procedures. We first check the existence of the input file. In case the input file doesn't exist, then this message is printed to the log. Next, we read the data from the input file. This initialization block is to assign the correct columns to the correct arrays. If the initialization is completed successfully, an associated message is printed to the log. Here in the same procedure, we also initialize a predefined set of locations, which will be used to cross-check the validity of the record locations. Our last procedure is where we have all our data validity checks. Here, in this example, we simply ignore invalid data entries. It's also possible to implement data corrections in case of known remedies. In this specific example, we first check if the activity start time falls within a predefined time horizon. Then, activity capacity is checked to be non-negative. Another check is for the activity duration. Each activity is expected to last less than a day. And finally, activity location cross-validation is performed to make sure the location value of the record maps into the predefined set. Failure to abide with any of these criterion results into an associated warning message. And all successful records are kept in another set that is called valid records. Now, let's run this example to observe the log prints. As expected, records 1, 5, 12 through 14 are dropped due to data test failures. As a result, only 12 of the initial 17 records are retained for further consideration in the remaining steps of your code. Thank you for watching.